If you can recognize him under the beard, you'll know that this is Nick Offerman from NBC comedy Parks and Rec. But when he's not in front of the cameras, he's kind of a true blue woodworker, pro, actually. Well, fair to middling, I guess. Sometimes I've made up to half my living with my shop, but I'm very spoiled because I, I do well enough as an actor that I have this, I have a shop that I never could have earned just with my table saw. Well, let's head inside and we'll check out Nick's shop. Come on in. So how does what you tend to build affect how your shop is set up? Well, I come from theater scenery, so, you know, a theater scene, scenery shop generally has your table saw with a big outfeed table because you're using a lot of large sheet goods and uh, a chop saw with a long, well-aligned 90-degree fence. So I guess I started with that, and as I developed more fine woodworking skills, I got a joiner and, and a planer and a s sanding station, and eventually I got a nice big bandsaw. This big bandsaw, it's from Laguna, it, uh, it has 17 and change inches of resaw, capability. It's, uh, it's just really heavy duty and so for a lot of the big timbery slab pieces that I work on this makes things a snap, you know. I make a lot of uh, tables out of big slabs of wood so I, ha I had this custom-made uh, huge outfeed table. It's on leveling feet so I can always keep it nice and flat. Um, and for, for the slabs I use I made this, this router jig that slides up and down the table and a big router with a surfacing bit will, uh, will put a flat side on an enormous tree slab. And this jig lets you adjust it up and down. It does, it, go, it goes up and down. And We're here at Nick's to do an article on this jig. Since a lot of folks don't have this big giant outfeed table like Nick has, he's, he set up a rig, same principle, same sort of carrying trough, but it'll work on almost anybody's workbench. So that's what you should look for in the article with Nick in this issue of Fine Woodworking. So how'd you come up with this thing, Nick? Well, uh, I was visiting my friend Keith in Fresno uh, who, who works in slabs and he d cuts a lot of veneers and stuff. And he had this weird framework that he'd gotten from Australia. It was like a vertical member with an A-frame uh, sort of arm that swiveled on an arc and you could attach a big router with a surfacing bit and it would register and move along the arm. So you could swing it on the arc and then move it two inches and swing it again and thereby surface an entire slab. And it was made of aluminum, it was, it was very high tech and custom. And, and I said, oh, that's amazing, I have to get one of those. And I looked it up and it was expensive. Uh, you know, I think it was $1,500 or something which I didn't have on me. So I thought about how could I come up with this system for myself. And you know, it, it's, it's pretty simple, but uh, I was really into it. I was so into it that instead of making the original out of plywood, I, I had some red oak left over. So I made it, you know, as nice as I could. And uh, I'm glad because it, it's my main sort of money maker. So these are some of the pieces that go through this big bandsaw and, and end up on your router leveling jig. This is the kind of material you work with a lot? Yeah. I. Um, you know, this is going to be a coffee table. Uh, this is all walnut, right? It is. It's California Claro walnut. That's beautiful. And, um, you know, I can take, this thing is 50 inches wide, you know, by about six feet long, and I can, uh, I can throw it on my table and get it nice and flat. And these, these uh, leg slabs I just did this morning, you know, and even the, the little pieces, I clamped down one end and it's, I can't run them through my, my joiner or planer, and uh, to do it with hand tools just takes a long time. And then this is just, uh, this is gonna be the stretcher. Mm -hmm. And this was, I, I often design first and then go looking in my wood stock, but I found this neat piece of walnut and the grain has this cool arc to it. Mm -hmm. So this, it's gonna get cut out along this white line and uh, it's gonna have just sort of a Japanese touch on the stretcher that will, the two ends will sit on the floor and it'll get bridle joints through the slab legs. That's more of the Krenov approach where the wood tells you what it wants to be. Exactly. 
So how much of this big slabby stuff do you actually have here in the shop? I've got a couple things in the closet. Let me uh, show them. Yeah, to you. let's check it out. I'm very spoiled that I have enough room wow. to uh, to store all these slabs. Obviously, the the big factor in finding tree slabs is price. And I always tell people all over the country, there's somebody with a chainsaw or like a tree service, or a lot of guys at the lumber yard will know a local guy right. who maybe mills up pieces. Right. Or, yeah, the first trick is to find guys like that, which you just have to snoop around locally. But the other trick is you got to be able to take the stuff when they have it. Right. It's not going to be convenient. It's not like I need to make this perfect table. Let me go out and pray that the right thing has fallen and it's sitting in the right pile. Yeah. You got to have a few things lying around and be able to store them. Often a, your municipality you can get a hold of and mm -hmm. say, hey, when you guys take out an oak tree because the school is adding a wing, mm -hmm. Do you have anybody, you know, and if you have, if you have a place to put it and you can slice it up, uh, e even if it's only an 18 inch trunk, mm -hmm. you can then take two of those and book match them and mm -hmm. make a dining table. Right. The, the possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. I, I knew this already that, uh, that you did boats because I saw you talk about it on the Martha Stewart show. Right. That's a really beautiful, is that like a cedar strip canoe? It is, yeah. There's a very specific old guy in this story. His name's Ted Moores, and he wrote the book Canoe Craft, which is the go-to book. I wanted to make a canoe. I went on Fine Woodworking Forum, and in every chat room, everybody says, get this guy's book. Right. I got the book, and I read it, and I ended up calling them to order plans. And by the end of the phone call, his wife, Joan, who is a... She should, she should be cast as a Canadian superhero. <laughs> she had me enlisted to make a video for them. You know, I, I had made some nice furniture by the time I got to a canoe, but there were some steps in the book that I was like, there's no way I could do that with a chisel. And uh, when you get to it, you just take a crack at it, and sure enough, you know, you just take your time and you accomplish each step and suddenly it's as though a Corvette has appeared on your, yeah. on your bench. That kind of applies to furniture making and lots of kinds of woodworking. It does. It's just one step at a time. Yeah. And then you're sort of amazed at the end. These are side tables for you, right? Yeah, I think these would make a couple nice nightstands. Yeah, they're beautiful. These were one big piece of a stump when I got them. And I, there was this weird void with some rot, so I cut it into two pieces and ended up having to install a foot in, in that second one. But uh, I eventually get them close enough where I can put them under that jig and flatten all six sides. I think if it's the same jig, we should cover them in the article. Sounds good to me. Well, thanks so much for uh, showing us your shop. It's been great. My pleasure. At this undisclosed location in LA. That's right. Or not. It might, it might somewhere in Los Angeles County or Orange County or San Bernardino County.